again. I don't remember what year this is. Over here, I'm on this one. And when I worked 911, I was a 911 operator. I had one call that I will never forget, um, wherein this lady, she said that she had put her baby in the oven. You hear things like that, you're gonna take it at face value, but you're hoping that it's a prank or something. They found out that it was, it was a true job. That was one job that really, I was really unhappy. I was, when I came home, I just still couldn't even get, get over it. Do you remember if you ever got calls about, about shootings? Not as much as it, all the shooting now, uh, but I've experienced those kind of calls. I heard some shooting started and everybody went down on the ground, but everybody got up except me. What I remember is I had gone and had my nails done and I had done all of my chores around the house and all that because that evening we were going to be going to visit another church. It was like across the street and um, that's how I, I caught a bullet. I opened the door for the car and I could hear the bullets hitting on the side that I told her, I said, those are, those are gunshots. And I said, I said, get in the car, get in the car. And I had opened the door, I had the car door open when she, when she fell. You know? When she fell, she rolled up under the car. I had to lift the car around the front and put the whole front around it and get her from up under the car. I helped him lift the car. I was there. And uh, then I, when the ambulance came, I rode with him to the hospital. I rode in the ambulance. She was out, yeah, she was out, yeah. The only thing she said, Lord have mercy. I don't even know what I'm thinking. I don't, really don't, you know. And then when we got to the hospital, that's when they said that uh, she won't make it through the night, you know, when they dealt with the doctors and surgery, they came, about three of them, and they said she won't make it through the night. They found at least 30 shell casings, I believe. 29 shell casings. So we know that it's boom, 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 boom. At least 29 times. And then one of those boom, boom, boom hit. Carolyn Jones, a block and a half away from that location. I believe my turning point for me is when my father passed away in 1993. I was 18 years old. I think from there, you know, my life started to spiral, not necessarily out of control, but I started to engage in the criminal lifestyle. I'm not saying out of control because uh, things that I was doing was more calculated, uh, more thought out, but it still was illegal nonetheless. What kinds of things? Selling drugs. So on that day in September of 1996, a friend of mine named uh, Shawnee Bird was shot by Ronald Ashby, who was an individual that was selling drugs in another location. You probably can't classify it as a rivalry. Probably can be looked at like that. I got a call from Shawnee Burke. He said that he was shot, shot in the leg. He said, I'm coming to see you and tell you what happened. He came, he seen me, showed me the, 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 the shot. I believe it went in and out. Um, he said he was going to the hospital. From that point, another car pulled up, which was another associate of mine. I told him what happened. He said he knows where the guy was at who shot our friend, and then he drove off. I didn't know if it was what was going to transpire from that point. I found out later what happened.
And Carolyn Jones, a 911 operator for 17 years, coming out of church from volunteering for unwed mothers, was tragically injured. It's hard to believe that things has happened the way it has. And I can't just, like I said, at times, it, the, the things that I want to say, it just won't come. Where did the bullet hit you? Um, it was um, in the... The, the bullet lodged in, in, in her brain, so they had to uh, part remove of, some of her. Part um, of the vein. The brain, yeah. They didn't thought she was going to live no way, so they left some of the fragment in her head. But then after she lived, then they had to go back and remove the, uh, the fragment that they, that they left in there. It's like I had to learn how to do everything again. But I just would not give up. Because if, if I would have given up, then I don't think that I would have done well at all. They would you know that whatever she had, she won't want to get no better. The only one thing that she just had laser surgery done last year, and they had said, I say would never get better, but she did when she had the laser. They removed yeah, 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 cataracts. Cataract, yeah. And I said, I couldn't see this and I can't. But I was so happy with that. So I told my husband, give me the keys. I think I can drive. And, and, and I, I think he got, I think he got upset and he was, I don't know if he was hiding the keys or what. She had wanted to drive and she was driving. I let her get behind the wheel one time and she didn't have no idea that she was stepping on the acceleration and she have a nice to drive since. Is that what you miss the most, driving? Oh my gosh, I wish I could drive. This is my son in the army, the one that, that I lost, that, that died. I went to the corner store and, and I, I wore, I wore my, my son's, um, his uniform jacket, so it, it won't, it won't close, but, <laughs> but look at all of the decoration he had. Isn't it awesome? Everybody was so, wow. And so he said, they say, you should wear this often. Every now and then, I go to the um, to the, the corner store, but I want to go a little further than the corner store. I want to go to Broadway, and I want to walk around um, in the stores there. Huh? But I can't do that, and I I feel deprived. When they were going to court, you know, DA, who he was calling me, telling me, I said, don't tell me nothing. I, I really don't want to know. I never got involved in it. I never had no hate toward them. It just, whatever they do, you know, that was the, whatever the system, I, I didn't want to know. So we didn't go anymore? No. I was convicted solely on the testimony of four eyewitnesses. <laughs> so now, automatically you think four eyewitnesses, right? But the four eyewitnesses is all family members. Ronald Ashby, and remember, he just shot my friend Shawnee Bird. His father and two girls. One is Ronald Ashby's wife and his father's girlfriend. But the two girls are sisters. So they testified that they got into the cab. The cab rode like two blocks away. The father and the girlfriend say they're in the window looking at the cab as it leaves. So they testified that they heard a lot of shots. So during all these shots, the windshield is blown out. They duck down. Boom, boom, boom. They look up while the, the person is still shooting. They look, they see me and bam, then they duck back down. That's what they testified to. 
That's how they ID'd us. Who does that? See how you're looking at me? Nobody does. That's not realistic. You duck down with your wife. Boom, 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 boom. You get up at the boom, 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 look at it, and then duck back down. So the point that I'm making is that they didn't really see what happened. So all four of them conspired to say that me and Bam did this crime. And three out of the four had deals because they was engaged in the criminal lifestyle as well. Never had anything to do with it. Never had a problem with Ronald Ashby. So he's only involved in this because he went to the hospital with a guy from our neighborhood because he was there when he got shot. So from the very beginning, you know, when you're naive and you're ignorant, you're 18 years old, and you're thinking that the criminal justice system is fair, you know you didn't do something, so you think you're automatically going to be found innocent. However, I was rudely awakened when I was convicted in 1997. But by that time, I had come to the, the rationalization and the realization that I was going to prison, and maybe I needed to go to prison. I felt that I did deserve some degree of punishment. Not the punishment that I got, but some punishment. When Governor Cuomo first announced his clemency initiative, it was made clear that they were hoping to commute the sentences of people who are incarcerated for nonviolent crimes. So taking on Michael's clemency petition, it felt a little bit like a long shot because he was incarcerated for attempted murder. When we took it on, we didn't realize that he was innocent. Um, we realized that throughout the course of the representation. He didn't, he didn't lead with that. He didn't tell us that because clemency isn't actually supposed to be about innocence or guilt. Clemency is supposed to be about rehabilitation and who you are today. At the time, I felt personally that I wasn't morally responsible because I didn't pull a trigger. It was only through learning and educating myself and doing a lot of self-reflection during my incarceration that I realized that I was just as culpable as the shooter because I knew what was going on and I could have stopped it and I didn't. We ultimately decided to go with the truth, which is that he was innocent. Um, and also, we, we focused on his um, really exceptional uh, change in growth while, while behind bars. He graduated from high school, he went to college, he got his master's degree while in prison. I believe he, he hadn't had a disciplinary infraction, maybe ever, but definitely in decades. So in that sense, he was a, a really fantastic clemency candidate. But I think what made his application extra compelling was the fact that um, Carolyn Jones fully, fully supported his release. What my thing was, I don't want to continue to have in the family going so far to, to visit him and to keep in touch with him and all that. I just want this, this, um, this man to um, be able to come back home to his family. And my animosities are not there because it's not a part of my character. Michael Flournoy's clemency application was granted in about six weeks. It was the fastest one that I've ever seen. And surely Mrs. Jones's support made a big difference. I think Carolyn Jones is a saint. How you doing, Auntie? <laughs> Michael. How you doing? How are you? Carolyn Jones' son, David, who was a childhood friend of mine, wrote me a letter in around 2002. And he told me that his mother wanted to talk to me. And um, that was something I definitely wanted for my own personal closure. Yes. So how you been? Good. Good. We've been so good. Yeah. But the way things are now, uh, I don't feel comfortable going out too much right. by myself. COVID? Um, that and then 
of course, uh, with all of these people with these guns. How your mom them? My mother's yeah. good. And, Everybody's good. And, but you know what I wanted to tell you? I got a lot of different things going on. You know, I got a restaurant in Manhattan. Really? Yeah. Um, I'm still tutoring for Bard College. Wonderful. I'm freshman college students. Okay. Um, you know, I, I talk to a lot of younger guys now. I try to talk to them about the decisions that I made mm -hmm. and how it impacted so many other people, my family and yours. They don't really know the definitiveness of their behaviors and their actions. They don't know it's like a domino. One domino fall, it affects so many other dominoes. Right, right. You know what I mean? When I, when I met you, I knew that once you came home, your, um, I, I, just, I just saw something in you. You remember where you met me at? Um, I, I went, I went, um, uh, Went to my graduation when I got yes, my master's degree. Yes, yes. You came to my commencement ceremony. That's right, sure did. And we ate. Uh-huh, you We cried, me more than you. Yes. We laughed. Yeah. We joked. Yes. We prayed together. Yes. You know, we've never really talked about specifics, but I'm talking about in regards to me getting out, like, it was so critical and instrumental the part that you play in securing my release you know you you've changed my life really in a way that you didn't even know that you was changing them from when i first seen you walk into the courtroom and you know that's not something i could repay i try to do better every day make every day better than yesterday and tomorrow better than today and that's that's how I look to repent for things that I engaged in in my early years. Mm -hmm. I saw in you that all of that was in your heart. And I wanted to be there with you. And I wanted to help you to, to come out of that place and I thank God every day for you. Right. And I'm always hearing good things of you. I'm, I'm just elated.